Long division doesn't have to be this difficult mystery anymore because by the end of this video, you're gonna see for yourself that it's really easy to understand. The way I look at it is I compare the highest degree of X in the numerator and denominator. In this case, they both have a value of one because before jumping into solving this, I wanna make sure if long division even makes sense. The key idea is that the highest order of the numerator needs to be greater than or equal to that of the denominator. So before going on, we want to first do a little review of normal division before we're talking about long division here or polynomial division, depending on the class you're in, they might call it different. So for normal division, let's take six divided by three, for example. Remember that you have three components, a divisor, a dividend, and a quotient. In this case, three is going to be your divisor. Your dividend is six, which goes under the bracket. And then from left to right, what we do is we say, how many times does three go into six? And the answer is two. So we write that as the first step of our final quotient. And if you remember, you would then do that two in the quotient times every term in the divisor, which is three, and you would get six. Subtracting that result from the dividend would give you a remainder of zero and we would stop. Okay, but for polynomial division, is it really different? Well, yes and no. We use the same idea, but in this case, polynomials have terms that are not constants. So in a sense, it's a little bit more challenging, but it's the same idea. Before I get into those details, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe and like button. And also, by the way, there's actually a quicker way to solve this problem. So be sure to check out this other video as well. But for this tutorial in general, we're just only focused on long division. So moving on, x plus one over x plus two is our original question. And we wanna use long division here because we wanna break this up into fractions that are just easier to work with. So X plus two would go on the outside to the left here. And if you remember, that's your divisor. X plus one would go on the inside, which is going to be your dividend. And it's the same idea. But in this case, what we do is we take the greatest term in terms of the power of X for both the divisor and dividend. I like to actually divide them first as a fraction to see what the quotient's gonna be. And we see that X goes into X one time. So we're going to write with a value of one in our quotient. And then just like before for normal division, we'll take that quotient value of one, multiply it by every term in the divisor, which would give you one times in parentheses x plus two, resulting in x plus two itself. And then we're going to subtract that entire thing from the dividend. And I like to put the minus along with parentheses here because I want to make sure that I'm not goofing up my minus and plus signs. So when you do x plus one minus whatever is inside the parentheses of x plus two, you would get a result here of minus one. And normally you would repeat this until this result happens to have a degree of x in its greatest degree that is less than your a divisor here. And we can stop here because minus one has a degree of x of zero. So the final result then of our long division is going to be one minus one over x plus two because that negative one that we had there when we subtracted everything is still going to be divided by your divisor. And so now we're taking the integral of one minus one over x plus two, and that's way simpler to work with because if you remember, when you take the integral of a difference of two fractions, you can break that up into two separate integrals. So the first one will be one dx, which will give you x. And then for the second one, this looks a lot like a one over x integral that gives you the natural log of the absolute value of x. But keep in mind here that we need to do a u substitution first because the denominator has this plus two part. So letting u equal x plus two, taking the derivative with respect to each variable on the left and right side here would give you du equals dx. And so rewriting the difference of these two integrals would give you the integral of one dx, which is simply x minus an integral of one over u du because we just used u substitution. Now the integral of one over u is simple. It's just a natural or the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. But you gotta be mindful to put back in what your substitution was for, which was x plus two. And there you have it. So this is pretty simple to work with and I hope this video was helpful. Turn on that bell notification so you don't miss my other videos. And be sure to check out this playlist for more calculus two tips and tricks and I'll catch you later.